Hey guys, um, let's go through your final lesson on for sixth grade math this year. Um, you do not have any homework that goes along with this section. Um, it's just us going through the you know stapled packet. Um, the front page is actually what's going to be our warm up page. So if you want, you could write like warm up under your name. If I can get my pen to work, I will write the word warm up. Warm up. And then the actual notes are going to come after it, so it's filling in these boxes. Now, I know this seems a little overwhelming. Um, I actually promise it's not too hard. You already know a lot of things related to what we're doing today. Uh, but the whole last lesson is it's called writing expressions. And we are going to translate a sentence into math. So when it says... Uh, translate a sentence into an algebraic expression that means we're going to take words and make it math this is something I wanted to review now uh, before you go off to seventh grade um, just so that you can have a hopefully sticks in your brain a little bit more before you start the eighth grade math next year so your warm-up is to try to come up with a list of all words that you think mean addition so adding uh, and all words that you can think of that mean subtraction, words that you think of that mean division, and words that you think of that mean multiplication. So thinking about word problems, try to figure out just logically what are words that you know mean addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. I do want you to pause the video and um, attempt that now. And then we'll unpause and we'll make a big list together. Okay, let's see what your list looks like compared to my list. Um, if we have words that are the same, that's good. Um, if I write a word on my list that you do not have on your list, I do want you to add it. So let's start with addition vocabulary. So these are going to be all the words that we can think of that mean adding. Well, I'm going to start with the obvious one. Add. You can have add. You can ha truly have addition. So in word problems, these are words that can pop up that mean, hey, in this problem, we should be creating something that is adding together. You might see the word sum, increase, more than, combined. Uh, plus, you might ask the word plus, uh, total, mm, let's see, together, um, let's see, there's a bunch that we could do, let's just say join, mm, and maybe in all, we could probably go on forever and ever and ever, but this is a good list to get you started. Let's see what words you came up with for subtraction. Well, again, I'm going to write the obvious one. Subtraction. Or subtract. But you might also see minus. Take away. Difference. Less than. Fewer. Decrease. Mm, I think that's a pretty good list. I don't think we need more than that. That's pretty good. Again, if I have words on my list that you didn't come up with on yours, do add it onto your list. Now let's do multiplication. So again, we'll start with kind of the more obvious choices, like multiply. <laughs> You might also see the word product. Uh, double. 
I'm going to say double slash triple dot 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 because I could say quadruple or times five. Um, but words like this are usually easy to spot. Uh, you might actually see the word times for multiply. You might see cubed. Remember when we talked about exponents? Um, we had something cubed. I mean, something to the third power means you had to multiply something three times. Um, twice. I should have included that there. Twice. Seen the word by. And I'm going to put give an example. You might see something like multiply by. Uh, you can see per, each, or every. These are the most some of the most common. And you might see of. Now of is very special. It's like blank of blank. And I think that, I think that's good. Let's do division. Um, I will literally have the obvious one first. Divide. <laughs> or you might see divided by. If you see the word quotient. Split evenly. Specifically this word evenly means division. Um, I'm going to say slash equally. Because if I divide, divide something e evenly, it means it's equal. Uh, if you see the phrase equal parts. Uh, average. Average is on there because you have to use the vision to find an average. And yeah, I think that's good. I think it's a good list. Um, again, if I have something on my list that you do not have on your list, please make sure you copy it down. This was our warm-up. Um, it's our warm-up because we're going to look for these key words in sentences and try to translate, so write, sentences into math. If I go too fast, just make sure you pause the video. But I am going to go to the next page in our little packet here. And it's the straightforward multiplication and extracting division problems. So they give us a sentence and we're gonna write the algebraic expression, which literally means the math, the mathy sentence. What I'm gonna ask, ask you to do is to underline keywords and circle variables, which are letters and numbers, just to help translate important information. So I'm being extremely clear with these extra titles, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, um, in the sense that I'm telling you all of the questions underneath that title are gonna be subtraction, or all of the questions are gonna be addition. What we're looking for is what was the actual word that told us it was addition. So our first phrase slash description says, the sum of x and three. First thing I want you to do is to circle variables and letters. So I have X and I have the number three. We need something to connect them. So now we're gonna look at our key words. You can always refer back to the front page of your packet, but the word sum means adding. Now, when we write the algebraic expression, you can't just write plus X three that doesn't make any sense, that doesn't look right, because math operations, add, subtract, multiply, and divide, glue things together, they connect things together. So in this problem, the sum is connecting x and three. So we say x plus three, and that was it. Our next sentence says, a number c added to six. So circle, letters and numbers, so variables and numbers, so that's C and six. And we're gonna underline word to tell us why we have adding. Well, this one should stand out very well to you. 
it literally has the word added, which is plus. Now this is worded kind of in a very special way. I want you to do a little star. And I want you to do a star and underneath here, I want you to write backwards. Sometimes, and it's just our English language, sometimes we write something, um, but when we r translate that into math, it doesn't translate in the exact order it's written. What do I mean by that? I mean a number C added to six means I actually started with a six and then I added C to it. So you, this is what I mean by backwards. The, in the sentence, C came before the number six, but mathematically, the way that's written means I started with the six, but I added C later. A little tricky. Now, with adding, it does have that special property called the commutative property that says you can add things in the same, in different orders and get the same answer. So writing it C plus six is still right, but this whole last lesson is about being extremely clear, translating what is the actual sen sentence mean in math, and so that's what I'm gonna focus on. Uh, let's go to our next one. It says four more than an unknown number V. Okay, so four more unknown number V. So circle your numbers in your variable, so that's four and V. We need to look for a word or phrase that represents our adding. Again, you can always refer back to the front page, but the word, the phrase, or the two words together, more than means adding. This is another special case. I want you to start. It. This is a special case because for more than V means I started with a V to be more than V, you then add four. It's another special case that's backwards. And again, with adding, it does have that commutative property, which means if you flip it around, you are still right, but that only works for adding or multiplication. But again, this whole lesson is about, can you translate it correctly? The last one, a increased by six. Okay, uh, circle variables and numbers, so that would be the letter A and the number six. The word increased is your plus. Now this one actually does go in order. A, we started with A, I'm increasing A by six, which means A plus six. That's it for adding. Let's go do subtraction. Subtraction, I will tell you, does have special cases as well. Starting with the first one. 25 less than B. Same strategy, circle your numbers and variables. So that'd be 25 and B. Now we're looking for keywords for subtraction and it's actually less than. Put a star by this one. This is a backwards case. Why? If I am 25 less than B, that means to actually figure out what did I ha what is B, you would have had to start with B and then take away 25. I know, kind of tricky and confusing. 25 less than B. If, don't write this, but if I wrote 25 minus B, that is not saying the same thing. That is saying B is, uh, I don't know how do I say this? Um, let me pause for a minute. Okay, I just had to gather my thoughts here to make sure I explain it well. If I write 25 minus B, this is saying that whatever B is had to be more than 25 if I'm taking it away. But that's not what this would end up being. Um, you just have to be extremely careful. Um, even if that explanation doesn't make too much sense, I wouldn't stress too much about it right now. You're gonna end up translating sentences so much in the next few years that you'll end up being able to spot these cases. Let's just go to our next one. 
where it says the difference between seven and an unknown number, n. Circle variables and numbers, so that's seven and n, and look for a key word. In this one, it's difference. This actually goes in order, saying the difference between. So I have to figure out seven, and the difference means subtraction. So seven minus n is the difference between them. The next one is a special case. I'm going to star it. And it says one half subtracted from a number F. Ooh, when I start circling numbers and letters, I need to be careful. They didn't just type the number. They wrote out a number. It still counts. So when I circle, I'm going to circle the words one half because those words represent the number. This is backwards, one half subtracted from. It's telling you from is where you're starting. So I'm starting with an F and from the F, I now take away one half. Last subtraction problem, 9.95 minus T, circle your numbers and letters. This one is a very straightforward question, minus is subtraction. And so I have 9.95, take away T or minus T. Now we'll go do multiplication and division. Multiplication and division don't have like tricky cases. So that part is nice. There's nothing that's backwards. Same deal under multiplication, circle letters and variables. So it says the first one is the product of X and six. Circle X, circle six. Product does mean multiply. Multiplication, as we've learned through this year, is the glue between two things. So we write this as X times six. But remember, multiplication can be invisible, so you can also write this as X six, or you can flip it around and say six X. Multiplication is that special is another special um, situation where you have the commutative property, which says you can multiply things in different orders and get the same answer. The next one says one third of 25. Another written out number, so I still circle it. Now you might be wondering, why is there not a variable? They just have two numbers. We have 25 and one third. Sometimes that happens and that's okay. We have one of those kind of special cases here of words that are kind of tricky to spot, and it's of, which is your multiplication. So this is saying one third times 25. You might recognize the word of um, dealing with the paw. Remember our paw equation or paw proportion uh, of tells us in some way, shape, or form we have a whole, and at some point we will have to multiply. Last one, five times as much as G. Times is one of those obvious ones that truly just means multiplication. So you can just say five times G, which is the same thing as just five G. If you want, you could rewrite this as G five, but you don't have to. Last set on this page is your division. No tricky cases here. Uh, circling numbers and letters or variables. We have seven divided by a, divided by is one of the obvious words, which is the division symbol. So you can write your answer in two ways. You can say seven, old school, division symbol, then a, but that's also the same thing as we've been learning in our class. Uh, division is fractions. So you can also write this as seven over a. The next one, the quotient of five and three. So this is another one where I don't see a variable. I only have numbers. That's okay. That happens sometimes. What's a key word? Quotient, which is a division symbol. So we would write this as five divided by three, 
but in our class we know division are fractions, so we can rewrite this as 5 over 3. Last one, a number t split evenly into six groups. If we split evenly, that's division. So we can write this in order as t divided by six, but remember division is fractions, so we can write it as t over six. Same answers. Last page, and I'm gonna scroll. If you need to go back, just rewind or pause. Last page, this one says all together. This is also combos. Combos. What do I mean by combos? It's when you have a sentence that might have more than one operation. But we will get there. So first sentence and phrase says the quotient of a number n and 14. So same strategy, circle variables and numbers. That would be n and 14. Look for keywords. Now you have to decide what is your keyword. That means looking at your front page. Well, the word quotient is division. So under operation, we're just going to draw the division symbol. Algebraic expression is actually just getting rid of the words and just writing letters and numbers and uh, add, subtract, multiply, divide. So we'd have n divided by 14. You can also write that as a fraction as n over 14. Let's go down my columns. y increased by 4. Circle variables and numbers. Increased by is adding. So operation is adding. This one can go in order. Y gets increased by means I'm adding to it four, and that would be it. I do want you to pause the video and attempt the two questions on the right hand side of our column. Unpause to check your answers. Okay, let's see how you did. Two thirds of a number x. So you should have circled two, the words two thirds, and you should have circled x. Of was your keyword, which means multiplication. So you would have wanted to write two thirds times x, which you could also write as two thirds x. This other one, 75 less than G, you should, should have circled 75 and you should, should have circled G. Less than means subtraction. Tricky question here, I'm actually gonna start it. This is a backwards problem. So it would have started G, take away 75, because if 75 is less than G, I had to start at G to be less than it. So taking away from it. If you made any mistakes, just correct it. Let's go to the column where it starts eight divided by the product of R and three. Now we're in combos where you're gonna have to look for more than one keyword. Start with your numbers and variables though. I see we have eight, I see we have R, I see we have three. What are keywords that you might see? Well, the word divided by is one of those obvious ones, that's division. Product is multiplication. So in my operations, we had division and then we had multiplication. So let's take it in order. It said eight divided by, so I have eight divided by what? When you have a combo, I do want you to put it in parentheses. So that'd be eight divided by parentheses what happened next? Well, what happened was that we had multiplication of r and 3. You can write this in many ways. You could say 8 divided by r times 3 is r3. You could say 8 divided by 3r. You could write fra them as fractions. I'm running out of space, so I'm not going to do the fractions, but all of these are the same thing. They're all equal to each other. 
just gonna draw these arrows to say, hey, these are all the same. Let's go to the bottom one where it says the sum of one sixth of a number Q and five. Circle numbers, you have one that's kind of split here, but you have the one sixth, you have Q, you have five. What are keywords? I'm gonna use a different color here. I'm actually gonna use my highlighter. Um, we have the word sum and we have the word of. So that's adding and multiplication. Adding, multiplication. Kinda tricky here. So the sum of, so adding is connecting two things. So I'm adding what? Um, this means adding is connecting two things. So adding is in the middle of what? Well, that's where I have one sixth of a number. So that means one sixth times, times what? Well, it says one sixth of a number Q. Then when it says and five, that means I'm adding after that five. This one's definitely a challenge. So we have one six Q plus five. I do want you to pause the video and attempt the last two questions in this packet and pause to check your answers. Let's see how you did. The next one says the sum of three and twice a number. Um, I realize I forgot a word here. Let's just say number X. My bad. Circle, well you can. So most of you probably only circled three because I didn't give you a variable. Um, you hopefully made up your own variable, but if you didn't, uh, my bad. I didn't catch that until right now. Circle your X. Now the key words you should have been spotting were sum and twice. Now when I say twice, that's not just multiplication. That literally means two times. So if I'm twice your age, you take your age and you'd multiply it by two. So now let's translate it sum of remember sum is adding it's connecting two things what is the sum or what is adding connecting well it's connecting a three and twice so two times what two times x this can also be written as three plus two x your last one um has a star it's a little tricky that's all and it says one fourth of the sum of a number y and five so circling your numbers would have been one fourth five and then your variable you would have circled as y keywords of means multiplication sum means adding so this is a little weird so we have multiplication and we have adding let's go in order we should have had one fourth of means I'm timesing it by something, but I'm timesing it by some an addition problem. So I'm going to put this in parentheses. What am I adding? I am adding y and five. You could rewrite this without the multiplication dot, and so it would look like one fourth glued to your parentheses, y plus five. I know it's kind of tricky. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you're going to be doing translating a lot in the next few years. But I wanted to give you at least a good reference. Um, you are welcome to keep this. It is a good set of notes that you can always refer back to in your future classes. But that is it. Bye, guys.